and welcome to the eFresh.com Fish and Seafood News. Today is the 21st of October. My name is Kim and these are this week's headlines. Bluefin tuna stocks close to collapse. Brussels seeks moderate quota cuts. Skippers resort to self-regulation. NPC to open regional office in Dubai. Farm fresh fish eggs. The prized southern bluefin tuna industry, worth hundreds of millions of dollars to Australia, could be heading for a major collapse unless a moratorium on fishing of the species is adopted. That is the view of Traffic, a program of the Worldwide Fund for Nature, and several scientists who are becoming increasingly concerned at the low level of spawning stock. The southern bluefin tuna is at an all-time low, below 10% of its original population size. And what that means is that at any time, it could collapse. The stock is recovering, there's no question about that. What everyone agrees on is that the stock is at no risk. Where people disagree is how quickly it will take to recover. The issue will come to a head at the annual Commission for the Conservation of the Southern Bluefin Tuna, which meets in South Korea next week. The European Commission said it wants to see more moderate cuts in fishing quotas, especially in the Atlantic and North Sea, where there has been an improvement in some stocks of some species. The cuts are more moderate this year than in recent years as there has been an improvement, though slight since 2005. The Commission remains very concerned about the state of cod stocks, particularly in the North Sea. For cod, things took a turn for the worse in 2008, when a greater proportion of the stock was caught than in any year since 1999. Brussels is therefore proposing 25% cuts in cod quotas next year in many maritime areas. For many other fish stocks on the list, 15% cuts in quotas are advised. It is an old argument, but this time Scottish fishermen believe they have the better of it. Faced with the prospect of more cutbacks in fishing days at sea imposed by the European Commission, they are fighting back with new methods to conserve endangered North Sea cod, the first fleet in Europe to do so. This year, as they await the annual round of negotiations that will determine the future of their industry, fishermen have introduced their own form of self-regulation in order to limit the amount of cod they can catch. Among the new methods they have introduced are real-time closures of areas where fishermen find large concentrations of cod in their trawl. In return for abiding by these conservation methods, fishermen are rewarded by the Scottish government by being given an extra allowance of days they can spend at sea. National Prawn Company, the world's largest fully integrated prawn farm, announced plans to open a regional sales office in Dubai. The company further revealed that it will be establishing a cold store in Dubai, which will enable it to expand its fresh and frozen prawn products offerings to local customers who can buy products in similar loads such as pallets or even cartons. On average, NPC produces 13,500 tons of white prawns a year in phase one of its operations, which involves 10 farms spanning 10 hectares each. However, it is currently expanding its farming operations with a 250 million US dollar investment into phase two, which will add another 15 prawn farms of the similar size to existing farms, thereby bringing the total prawn production to approximately 45,000 tons. The sturgeon has been around for a couple of hundred million years, and over time this fish and its roe, which brought into contact with salt becomes caviar, have caught the attention of everyone from Aristotle to Peter the Great to Anne Fleming. But this year, there has been no caviar from the Caspian Sea, at least no legal caviar. Poaching, pollution and overfishing have caused once plentiful stocks to dwindle to levels that have caught the attention of sites. The absence of any caviar from the Caspian this year has given farmed caviar a clear run. The rising status of farmed caviar is the biggest thing to happen to the international caviar market in decades and the process of re-educating the consumer is starting again, with gourmets being told that the farm stuff is of a consistently higher quality than Caspian caviar. Thank you for watching the eFresh.com Fish and Seafood News. See you next time.